Well, I'd like to welcome everybody back to Alabama Care. Today we are at the Lakeshore Foundation and we have Mr. Cliff Cook, the Associate Director of Recreation and Athletics, and Ms. Susan Robinson, Lima Foxtrot Coordinator. And today we're going to be talking about being active and the importance of being active. At this point, I'd like to hand it over. Mr. Cook, if you would introduce yourself. Hi, I'm Cliff and I'm an Associate Director at, Rec uh, at Lakeshore Foundation of Rec and Athletics. Happy to be here and thank you so much for having us on for this opportunity to talk about being active and ways you can do that at home and also come to Lakeshore. Well, we appreciate you spending the afternoon with us. And um, if you would give us a little bit of history, work history and how you came to work at uh, Lakeshore. Okay, um, I went to uh, college at Samford right next door and um, was actually studying to be um, to, to do something in psychology and then um, maybe something in business, uh, which neither of those, those things are here at Lakeshore. Um, <laughs> but uh, through a series of events, ended up working here part time as a lifeguard. Mm. I'd, I'd been a lifeguard previously in my life and um, wanted to have a, a part time job um, right out of the gate um, and um, started working here, really not knowing much about Lakeshore and um, what they had to offer. Um, and uh, very quickly did I fall in love with this place when I started working here. Um, and um, it's a vibe. It really is. And, it is. You, you get yeah. it when you come in the door, it's a vibe. Yeah. And so um, as I, I was here, I was continuing to look for other jobs. Um, but um, at the same time, really enjoying my, myself here. And um, I was uh, seeing how I could get more and more involved with working at Lakeshore. And I would start to work for a program, um, maybe teach a learn to swim class or um, start coaching and um, helping in that area. Um, and eventually a full-time position um, job came open and I went for it and got it and have been here ever since and gotten to grow throughout. And so I, it's been pretty neat being able to start at a very entry level part time position um, and, and work 13 years later to where I am today. Yeah, you kind of get the feel for the whole organization um, at every level there. Right. And I feel right. like a lot of people coming right out of college, it's a, it's a great way to get your foot in the door with organizations is starting off with either a part time job or an internship. Absolutely. So. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> Ms. Robinson, if Hello. you would introduce yourself. Uh, hi, my name is Susan Robinson. I am the Lima Foxtrot Program Coordinator, which is just a fancy term for our military program. Um, Lakeshore Foundation, Lima Foxtrot, those are the, 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 the alpha phonetic ways in the military that you would say LF. So, you know, we're real original with that. But um, it's always amazing and people are like, what does that mean? I was like, LF, LF. And they're like, oh, okay, we get it. Um, I've been here um, in my current position for uh, 10 years, 10, 11 years. Um, and then with the organization for 14, I started out as an, uh, an aquatic specialist and, um, position opened up for the military program. My, um, I've got a, a family full of veterans. My sister's a veteran. Um, the, the Lima Foxtrot program had just started when I came to, to Lakeshore. So I've been able to kind of be on the, the ground, uh, floor of, of all of that and, and seeing it's, uh, helping out uh, our, our men and women who've, who've fought for us, who've served our country and um, sustained some type of injury, illness, um, or, you know, some type of uh, other disability and showing them that, okay, this may not be the way that you used to do something, but there are ways that you can continue to be active and, and have a, a great quality of life um, just by, by, you know, right, riding a bike. It's, it's pretty, pretty simple. Um, but so it's amazing uh, what being active can do and just changing your mindset. Oh yeah. One of, uh, one of my favorite, uh, quotes from, from, we do program evaluations at the end. Cause you know, we, we always strive to try to do to better. And the best way we know how to do that is finding out from our people who are participating, what, what can we do to improve? 
And uh, one woman wrote on there, um, you know, if my husband can do all of these things at Lakeshore, he might be able to take the trash out every once in a while. <laughs> yeah. So um, he's digging himself a hole, right? Yeah, there. <laughs> a little bit of a hole. You know, there are there are those moments that happen too. But you know, it's it, we're recreation gets looked at as something that comes like way far down the line. Um, but you know, you, you've got your basic needs that are met, you know, you've got a roof over your head, you got food in your belly, you got clothes on your back and it's like, okay, there's more to life than just those three things. So, you know, where, where do you go to try to, to, to find that? And, and Lakeshore has been one of those places that you can see that aha, that light bulb moment where, where things just click for people that it's like, Oh, okay. Well then I, I might be able to do this and I might be able to do that. And I might be able to go back to school and I might be able to go back, you know, and find gainful employment and not, um, not just, just be, um, you know, be an active part of society instead of just, uh, taking in those retirement checks after, after retiring from the military. And I feel like sometimes we can kind of get stuck in our own little bubbles. When you walk into Lakeshore, you see others that are, you know, experiencing similar challenges and overcoming them. And they may be a few years ahead of you. Mm -hmm. um, and so that gives you an inspiration uh, to, to kind of switch that view that you might have uh, that this, this could be it. I mean, I think that in that own, you know, we get absorbed in our own little bubble of, of what's going on with me directly. And, you know, oh, woe is me. Nobody knows what what is happening to, to others or... Heaven forbid there might be a, another person in, in that same situation. Um, so not only just the seeing others that are, are in a similar situation, but um, being able to have a community of, you know, somebody else who, who has the same, you know, disability that you do probably has the same issues that you do. So being able to actually have somebody to talk to that knows exactly what it is that you're going through is huge. Yeah. And, and having that connection and the mentorship there, mm -hmm. um, a supported network. Um, yeah, that, that's kind of the key, I think. And, and what you focus on is who, who is your community and what, what is it that you get out of that community? And for some people that might be inspiration, but you have to ask yourself, where is that inspiration coming from? Is it coming from routine things that the individual is doing that's not necessarily inspiring? Um, and is like, what's your view of disability too? Like, do you have a view of disability that makes these routine things inspiring? If so, maybe shifting what your perspective of disability is to where you know, the, the standard of living or just the overall standard is a little bit higher and you do expect more of those people with disability. Um, and suddenly you don't see the community as like this, uh, something other that you can draw inspiration from, but you see it as something you belong to as something you're a part of, and you can also be proud of. And I, th I think Lakeshore, um, can help provide that. Um, and it's not just Lakeshore, of course, there's, there's many different disability communities that you can be a part of to um, really gain that support. Do we have it here at Lakeshore? Absolutely. And there's people all along different walks of life here at Lakeshore. There's some people that have just been injured. Um, there's people that have been born with their disability. Um, some that have acquired disability later on in life, all, all types of disability. And they're all at different aspects of what they're, what we call disability identity. And I can talk about that later <laughs> if you want. We to. might, yeah, we might circle back to that because yeah. that's a new phrase for me. Yeah. Um, but I, the importance of having a community um, that you can identify with. Um, and then also, I guess, draw inspiration from in the sense that you want to be with them so that you're more active. Mm -hmm. um, I, I think that that is kind of the key and, and what we try to encourage and foster at Lakeshore. But really, it's not it's not the staff that that do it. It's the disability community itself. Mm -hmm. And um, we, we try to stay out of the way and let 
let the good things happen. Let, let it naturally evolve there. Right. And there are two um, words that really stuck out to me when you were going through that. One was community. The other one was expectation. Mm -hmm. uh, I think expectation can be a big, powerful word. Uh, and you mentioned raising that expectation of what that looks like. That can be life changing. Yeah. So it, when you think about disability, um, a, a way to think about it, it there, there, there's so many ways to think about it. Look, the way that I think about it is it's, it's a characteristic of someone. Um, and it's not necessarily a negative characteristic. It's not necessarily a positive characteristic. It's just a characteristic. And um, it, if I were to look at someone else and they were to have another characteristic, say their hair is brown, um, does that make them a better or worse person? Or what can I conclude from that? Um, and what they're able to do, not much. Um, and the kind of the same thing would apply to disability. If they have a disability, what, what do I expect that they can do or not do? Well, I don't know because I don't know that person. Um, and they could be able to do just as much, if not more than someone without a disability, or maybe not as much. Um, and so it's, it's kind of key in not making assumptions um, when no. you, when are creating these expectations when you uh, meet someone or know someone with a disability. Kind of not putting limiting beliefs on others. Yeah, absolutely. <clears throat> Getting to know them a little bit or, you know, as much as you can there uh, and helping them figure out what their expectations are. Right. Reason. Right. Um, so we talked about the community here. I would like to talk specifically about the importance of being active physically and mentally. So if someone has not been active for a while, um, and they may forget the, you know, the importance of that and, and what they receive back. If you could talk a little bit about <clears throat> the physical and mental be benefits of being active. Okay. So there, there's the, the standard physical benefits of being active where you can increase muscle, um, you can increase your cardiovascular health. The, the, the typical medical increases are benefits that you get out of um, activity and being active. Um, are just pretty apparent. Um, and then I'll, I'll say there's, there's kind of two, I guess, well, not just two, but there's um, two characteristics that I'm th thinking of that are reasons to be active. And one is you want to maintain that level of fitness that you have. You don't want to lose function um, or you don't want to regress in where you are. And then two is you want to improve function or improve strength or your cardiovascular. And both are extremely valid. And um, we want to be able to meet people where they are and help them accomplish those, those goals and that they have. And not saying that one is better than the other. Um, people have different goals and wants out of what they do. Um, but you can you can work to either maintain what you're doing and that's great um, or or um, work to improve that's great too the the other side of it and this I mentioned I'm a psychology major the side that I'm super interested in is the psychological benefit that you get out of um, being active and it's it's really well documented how much benefit that activity does have on one's mood and how it will um, benefit just how you see yourself. And um, I, just, I was yeah, having I, a crappy day yesterday. Yeah, I went <clears throat> to the YMCA and I played uh, racquetball by myself for like a half an hour. It totally changed my mood. Now yeah. it's six o'clock at night. Yeah, and, and it's just like instantly. Right. As soon as you start sweating, it's just like turns over there. Yeah. And I also want to comment and then we'll transition there. <laughs> or as you know, just whacking a ball against a wall. Uh, yeah. That'll also, you <laughs> this know, this is not my get, head get, against the wall. Get some frustrations out. That's exactly um, what it was. Um, yeah. That, that makes a huge difference. <laughs> I would say it was hand eye coordination, but it was definitely just, oh, <laughs> it was definitely. Yeah. Just seeing how hard you can slam that ball without, uh, having it bounce back and smack you. Yeah. Um, I like the, um, the distinction there between gaining, um, uh, function or maintaining function. Mm -hmm. um, it reminds me, I used to wrestle in college and we would bulk up during the off season <clears throat> and then we'd lose a bunch of weight to cut to our weight. And then the rest of that time in season, you would still be lifting, but you knew your maxes weren't going to go up. Mm -hmm. You were just lifting so that you lost muscle 
slower than your opponent. Right. <clears throat> and I have a family member. She's a member here at Lakeshore and us- utilizes the pool quite a bit. We know that her goals aren't to, you know, get faster lap times. It's so that she can, you know, continue to be mobile as long as possible uh, for the remainder of how long she can be. Uh, right. so, so trying not to lose that uh, as fast as. Right. And like, and allowing that to be a motivator is, I think a lot of times we are goal oriented in that we want to see actual see improvement, but that's not necessarily what has to be a motivator. Um, a motivator could see, I don't want to see um, like regression. Um, and I just want to be able to maintain and that itself can be a motivator. And are, am I maintaining being able to stay in the water this amount of time? Or can I ride a bike around the track this amount of minutes without getting tired? Um, yeah. I, I, I think it's that. great. <laughs> <Yeah>. <clears throat> Susan, is there anything that comes to mind? Well, I, in, in thinking about that regression piece, I mean, it, you know, the, the famous adage of, you know, if you don't use it, you lose it. But sometimes if you lose it, it's lost forever. And, and so especially with, with certain disabilities, especially if you've got a, a progressive disease, um, that regression, you know, not by not staying active, you, you may lose function that you'll never be able to get back. So it's, it's important to stay active and, and keep going as, as much as you're able to um, so that you can continue doing the things that, uh, that you like to be able to do. I'd also, I don't know if it's true or not, but I feel like the more active you are, probably the less medication you take long-term. Probably depending upon what your conditions are. Um, you know, there, there are so many studies talking about the, uh, the correlation between physical activity and blood pressure medicine, um, diabetes medicine. I know uh, a, a woman here who, um, when she started coming here, she was on insulin and has been working out enough to where she doesn't have to take insulin. That's anymore. amazing. By the it way. is. And, and, you know, and, and it also, it, it goes to the, the level of work that somebody is, is willing to, to put in, you know, um, not wanting to have to, to be reliant on, on medicines and having to deal with side effects. And, you know, our, the way our medical system is set up, it's so much easier for a doctor to give you a pill or give you a prescription or go, you know, wanting to, to do other things other than just saying, Hey, why don't you go see if you can take a walk for, you know, 10 minutes, three times a day. Yeah. It, it, exercise it is rare that exercise is part of that prescription plan for for people versus well here's a prilosec for your acid reflux you know it couldn't possibly be that you just need to be a little bit more active and lose a few pounds and the acid reflux will go away it's i have acid reflux i hate it (laughs) it's horrible i take a pill for it every day exactly and so you know it's, it's so it goes it goes back to that is that you know there are certain conditions that you know, no matter what you do, you're going to need to to take medicines for it. But others, um, you know, exercise re- helps you reduce that. I can't stop the spicy food. <clears throat> well, I have like a thing for spicy food. That'll do it. Spicy Indian food, I'm in. Yeah. You know, I'll take the Tums <laughs> afterward, whatever. <laughs> Um, oh, so you're that you're that guy in the commercial that the food is like smacking them upside the face, and it's that's exactly. So yeah. I take my pill in the morning. I'm supposed to take it on an empty stomach, but by the end of the night, sometimes I got to chew those tums. <laughs> get to, and then I'll have a glass of milk just to like coat mm-hmm. it, uh, which really helps. Yeah, and this is kind of a hot point right now too. Um, I feel like we should be talking about being active and healthy more, um, especially during this pandemic. Mm-hmm. I think that could be more than, I feel like a lot of the talk we've had is about doctors prescribing or giving vaccines. And we at Alabama Care are all vaccinated, my family members vaccinated. Mm-hmm. But uh, going on top of that, I think it is really important to be active to help fight off things like that, mm-hmm. to have a better immune system. Yeah, I mean, being able to to have that, that higher quality of life, being active, um, you know, uh, back to, to Cliff talking about the, the, the mental health piece of it, you know, being active releases those endorphins and those are those feel good chemicals that, that all reside within our bodies. Um, you know, there's many other ways of, of having them, but you know, 
exercise is a very easy way of, of getting those, those endorphins. And um, it just, it helps with, with your immune system. It helps with all of your systems throughout your body and uh, it makes things a little bit easier to, to deal with throughout the day. What's your favorite way to be active? My favorite way to be active um, right now, as you can't see my crutches, is not a whole lot. It's <laughs> upper body stuff. <laughs> Um, but I, you know, I, I like to, to be able to, to, to walk or, um, you know, be, be social with, with people. Um, I like to garden, um, you know, people think of physical activity as always having to do something that like works up a sweat on a you court, have to, drenched. yeah, or on a quarter, this or that, you know, going out and, and, and gardening, Mow, mowing the yard. If you've got a, you know, a push mower that doesn't have too much of an assist. Um, you know, riding lawnmower, eh, that's not going to give you as much. That's my activity. type of mowing. Yeah. Um, but, but, you know, any, anything that, that's, that requires you out being active, you know, going, going, it, it sounds weird, but going shopping is a form of physical activity because of the walking that you have to do. <laughs> Don't tell the know? women in my life that. Well, we won't, we won't <laughs> discuss all of that, but, but anything that, you know, that is, is looking to, to get that heart rate up. Um, you know, for an extended period of time, um, whether it's a, a, a quick, you know, oh, it, it increases for, you know, a minute or two or, or a long sustained period of time for that, you know, endurance, cardiovascular health. Um, <clears throat> I have never gotten into gardening. I have like one house plant inside and it's struggled. So I need to do better. I need well, to get see, a I grew up on, on a it. farm, so it makes a difference. Okay. So you're used to just waking up and. Yeah. Having to go out. Um, there, there's nothing like having to go through and, and picking fruits and vegetables that it's like, oh, okay. Yeah. That, that shoulder, like that reaching <laughs> over and over. Um, I'm, I'm right hand dominant. So a lot of the times my right arm would be a little, it's like, you could look, it's like, huh, this one's a little bit bigger than the other yeah, one you kind of favor um, the that side. I need to, you know, not have, but it would get weight because of holding everything in whatever everything basket or yeah, everything that we would pick in this one. So kind of bounce out a little bit, but Cliff, what's your go-to, uh, active, active activity. So, uh, <clears throat> if I'm not chasing my four-year-old around the house, which <laughs> is a very active activity, um, I, I do enjoy getting out on a tennis court and, um, that, that's exactly what we were talking about that you don't have to do, um, is getting out in the court and sweating. It's what I love doing mm -hmm. and I've grown up doing. Um, being able to do that and still do that today um, and like to get out when I can um, and uh, just it, it's an opportunity to be with some adults um, and maybe not have a four-year-old around um, but then also um, get out some of that competitiveness that we yeah. have inside of us and whack a ball you know and yeah. um, just I'm, it's not aggression that that you have necessarily, but it's it's just being able to be competitive and really fight for something um, while being active at the same time. Is, I'm the same. Way. Yeah. I have to be competitive in, right. in something there, even if I'm like lifting weights. It has to go back to I'm doing this to better myself in a competitive manner. Uh, my sport recently has been hockey. So I play ice hockey down in Pelham. That's why am I doing this squat? So that I can have a faster stride. Yeah. Uh, I got to get out there and hit somebody yeah. and score a goal. Right. Yeah. Um, so let's talk about being active at Lakeshore. What are some examples of, uh, that individuals can be active at Lakeshore? Clear, All right. Sir. So my gosh, when you, I know there are so many. Yeah. Right? So <laughs> you're, if you walk in the door at Lakeshore, um, you will be greeted by one of our, um, our, lobby um greeters and they will kind of ask you where you want want to go and there's there's kind of three pillars of activity that we have um to where you can go and one of those is our aquatics facility um one of them is our fitness um, facility our fitness center and then there's the rec and athletics um domain um, which is in the the field house um, or the gymnasium the track yeah. up here yeah yep yeah. and um, you, there, each one of those different pillars or domains, they, they have um, different classes and activities that you can do to get active. So you can come and swim, you can come and lift weights, you can come walk the track or bike the track, um, play basketball. Um, there's, there's many different ways um, to get active at Lakeshore. Now, uh, <clears throat> I'm gonna do a plug for the programs. Are there programs right now if somebody's looking to get active? 
yes. maybe is not a member and thinking of becoming a member uh, or wants to join a program? Are there some that they can sign up for in the next month or so? Absolutely. So most of our programs are still available to where you can sign up for and many of them you, you sign up weekly anyway so yeah. that you can come and participate in them. And if you go to the website lakeshore.org, um, there's a list of the, web, the different programs on there. Um, there's a lot. Um, I'm not going to pretend to be able to name all of them. Are there a few that you'd like to highlight? Um, absolutely. Um, there, so for our youth programs, we have some uh, programs called Fresh, which is an after-school play um, t type base, or recreation-based program um, for kids with disability um, and their siblings. Then there's another program called Kid Power, which is more of a functional development program. Um, program, but it's also a lot of fun. Um, our uh, specialists like to have um, a good time with the, the different um, members that come in. Now, is this are these after school programs? Both, both of them are after school programs. Okay, so that's pretty cool because I know a lot of families and parents might be looking for after school programs right now, right. getting back into it. And this is a weekly sign up. Yes. Um, well, those you can sign up once um, and then you can come as many times as you want or as few times as you want. Um, we just want to be able to meet people where they are mm -hmm. and allow them to participate. And then not only do we have after school programs, we have in school programs too, or um, programs specifically designed for kids who are homeschooled. Mm. Um, and that, that program is called Splash and Dash and you would come, or no, not excuse me, not Splash and Dash. Um, oh yeah, yeah, I think it is Splash and Dash. Yeah, dash. yeah. Um, <laughs> So you, you um, come and do a, a land-based program and then you go to the pool and do a, um, a pool uh, learn to swim type program as well. So you're still getting your PE is what I would think of in school. Right. <clears throat> and you're, still, you're coming to Lakeshore to get that PE. Right, right. That, that, and um, be around different classmates, if you will, um, um, that you can be friends with and then also um, just working with our awesome staff. I feel like, um, is there anything you'd like to add to that, Susan? I mean, we've got, uh, with the everything with the pandemic, it's also kind of spawned um, some online programs. Mm -hmm. So people are able to uh, go to our website or go to our, our various um, YouTube channels and being able to pull up a, a workout that they would be able to do in the comfort of their own home. Um, you know, might just need a chair or, um, you know, we've substituted water bottles for weights um, substituted uh, for, for certain other, uh, activities, being able to use, you know, a broom handle to, for some, some balance and, and flexibility. Um, but that's been one of the things to be able to stay connected, um, especially during the pandemic where people aren't feeling as safe going and being in a group setting, especially early on. Um, but even now, you know, it's like, oh, well I could spend, you know, 20 minutes in the car, one way, could do this, do that, or I could log on and being able to do some of the online programming and cut out that, that commute time. So, mm -hmm. um, and being able to do it more on a scale or a time frame that works for me, being able to pull it up and uh, be able just to, to hit play and have a guided exercise. Now I noticed for myself, <clears throat> I will do individual workouts, but if I'm competing and stuff like that i have to have a schedule where it's like every sunday we have men's league mm -hmm. uh every wednesday i have pickup mm -hmm. those types of things now are there schedules um i'd like to talk a little bit about the importance of schedules and being in that class um and are the online are our schedules and classes provided through the online like you said so the the ones that we have that are online that you sign up for, um, it's it's a Zoom class. Mm -hmm. So you you are able to. But there are other people there. Yeah, kind of able, accountability. Yeah, it does. It has that that accountability. You know, to where you can. Um, we we do have members that you Bash know. Bash each other for can, not showing. You, up. Well, you can set your watch to them. Um, one of them, he came. He was in walking at six in the morning instead of one in the afternoon, and I looked at him and I was like you are throwing my whole day off because <laughs> I know that this certain individual, he, you know, you can set your watch to it at like one o'clock. He's going to be walking the track and he's like, I had some things going on today and I needed to get my walk in. And I was like, Oh no, I said, I'm, I'm just giving you a hard time about it. It's just like, you know, there's certain things and certain people that it's like, okay, you know that you can count on, you know, Sam being here at, at three in the afternoon or, whatnot and and we notice we notice those things when when somebody isn't 
um, doing stuff. So just having that accountability or, you know, being able to call and say, hey, is everything okay? Like yeah. we've noticed that you haven't been around and usually, you know, it's something simple of, oh, I've had some appointments or I've had a surgery or, you know, just some stuff has come up and, and I've had to alter my schedule. But, but, but having that, you know, some, it, it's nice to know that somebody else is is paying it's attention. It's like having a private trainer without paying for the service. Uh, like a, someone a like, hey, bit. what are you doing? Yeah, it, it's like, you know, people, or even when we've been busy, you know, well, we may not always have times to walk around the building and somebody will see us and they'll be like, oh, hey, we haven't seen you in a while. You know, it, it's nice to know that, that, that people uh, here, you know, see you for, for who you are and what you're doing and, uh, and, and, you know, want to keep having those interactions with you versus just kind of like glancing at you. Bleh. Although you did mention before we went live, sometimes it can be a little overwhelming if you're trying to get in a little it, personal it, workout. It can, or... it can as, as, as staff, you know, we're, we're always there and we always want to be there and helpful, but it's just like, gosh, I just want this like 10, 15 minutes to myself on a machine, not having to think about anything except Clear my for, head. yeah. And, and, you know, doing all those things that we do when we work out. Mm -hmm. Um, but it's like, Oh, hey, you work here, right? And it's yeah. like, <laughs> as much as I try not to have anything that says that I do, yes, ma'am, I do what you need. And they're like, do you mind if, especially if we're in the fitness center, do you mind changing the channel to, you know, ESPN? It's like, sure. Yeah. Like, let me get off this machine and let me, let me go do that. But, um, but it's, so it, it, it is a challenge, um, you know, working here and trying to, to find our own opportunities for physical activity but um but i would say for the most part you know we're we're able to join in on leagues um we've got a, a tennis league going on right now still yep. um that you know is outside being able to to get out and uh be active with some others mm -hmm. and uh, mr cook if you would speak a little bit on maybe the long-term success you see when people sign up <clears throat> for the programs okay. uh, and being held accountable a little bit there. Okay. Um, so <clears throat> it depends specifically what you're looking at. And so, again, we talked about the goals and, and what people are trying to get out of a program and are they trying to maintain their, their level of fitness or improve? Um, and the, the long-term effects directly correlate with that, as you would imagine. Um, we, we have done some studies though, that quantify some of this information so that we can truly see, Hey, do we have a bit or an impact on these individuals? And just to summarize the study that we did, we offered, um, tracking devices to different athletes and, um, recreation participants and had them participate in, I believe six, six or seven weeks of programming and wanted to track their activity and see one was their increase in activity over the amount of time and then also how was their um, psych psychology um, impacted as well and um, both of them improved hmm. and it was really neat to see and actually look at data um, rather than just thinking yeah i think people got better yeah um, so the the tracking device would they measure like heart rate and yep yeah so that's for it would be like a, a watch or something right like it, it, yeah it was a fitbit that, yeah that they had and um um they, that's a cool study to do it, like even if you were just starting to get into it sign up for that study right mm -hmm. it, it'll jump start you right yeah. there and you know that that was something that we did that was organized but also you can do that on your own mm -hmm. too right you can you can totally just um get a tracking device yeah. um there's several that are really inexpensive i don't agree with mine all the time <laughs> <laughs> it's like i've yeah. burned way more calories than that right <laughs> well i mean they're not perfectly accurate like last night i was driving and i um finished my act activity workout and i was like oh i just got all the rest of my steps in so yeah. I was like, <laughs> but i think you're going 60 miles an hour yeah. <laughs> um, fastest runner in the world right um <laughs> But they, I think it does give you a pretty good idea, and it's it's at least consistently inconsistent if it if it is uh, it, with how it measures. So you can get an idea based on um, your you, the where you started from and then where you're going with mm -hmm. it as well. And there are times too when I feel like I'm maxed out, mm -hmm. <clears throat> and I'll look down at that tracker the numbers would be like no you still got you can still keep going here mm -hmm. you can push yourself a little bit harder yeah i'm like oh, my heartbeat's got to be at 200 i look down it's like 160 i'm like oh, what am i thinking yeah <laughs> absolutely 
<coughs> and I, that was one of the cool things that um, we did with our kids as well is um, we would have them say like what's your activity level at and they would look at the number and um, they would we would want them to get it to a certain number um, for them to be able to experience benefit yeah and, and keep it there for a few minutes yeah exactly yeah. I, <clears throat> I like some of that stuff too the tracking devices sometimes i feel like i'm overwhelmed and i can get a little bit uh like anxiety mm -hmm. and i'll look down like you know uh, something's going on with my body i look at at the device and it's like no you're fine dude it's in your head chill mm -hmm. out uh, so it kind of resets you a yeah. little bit and then there's the converse of that though right when it messes yeah. up and it says i just turned it off then. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Like, this thing's broken yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um I would like each one of you to highlight a success story of a new member uh, or of a member that's really coming to mind uh, in the in the kind of the last year. All right, I'll start with that, and I'll I'll circle back to disability identity um, at this point. And um, this disability identity first, I, I want to put a disclaimer out there that I don't identify as having a disability and do not profess to be an expert on disability identity at all, but l allow me to share my understanding of it. And disability identity is how someone with a disability views themselves. And, and not only views themselves, but views themselves as a person with a disability. And that disability identity can be negative, it can be positive, it can be neutral. Um, it depends from person to person and we had a, um, a young member, um, a, a child, that was embarrassed of his disability, and he wanted to keep it secret. Um, and at school, um, he had actually, um, the, the amount of function he had allowed him to keep it um, secret. And so um, other kids, um, other peers, wouldn't necessarily know that he had a disability looking at him, um, even though he does, and he did not want anyone to know. And he came here to Lakeshore and learned more about disability. And were, he was around other kids that had disabilities. Um, and suddenly over time, I guess it wasn't rapidly, but over time became comfortable with disability. And I would say even proud of having a disability. Um, and he ended up in school writing a paper about his own disability and was offered the opportunity to share it with his, the class, and he did. That's and amazing. yeah, he got up in front of everyone and read, read his paper about his disability um, and then answered questions on it. And the, the shift that he had from being ashamed of having a disability to it being something that he was proud of and the core to who he was is something that I think Lakeshore um, and the disability community had a really large impact on. Yeah, I imagine it did. And if you don't mind me asking, what age, about what age was that individual? Oh gosh, I, I it would I would say between age ten and thirteen. See that that's yeah. such a crucial age too because I remember <clears throat> bullies can be bullies at that age. Yes. And oh, so can girls. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and you're going, maybe you're just getting into like middle school. So a whole new set of classmates and to go from not wanting to talk and share to sharing in front of the class, that's, that's a life lesson and, and a, a switch that's flipped for that individual for the rest of their life. That's, that's huge. Right. Uh, I feel like we all kind of have things around that time in our early uh, childhood and early adulthood that we kind of have to go through in that aspect and, and Lakeshore kind of lend, lend a helping hand for that, that student there. Right. That's absolutely. amazing. Yeah. yeah. Susan, is there any? I've been trying to think. Uh, I know you put you on the spot. You yeah, did not get these yeah. talking points. Um, Mr. Cook had uh, you know, days <laughs> to play on this. <laughs> um, you know, I, th I think with everything that's gone on with the, the, the pandemic and how, you know, things have been, things that people with disabilities have asked for, um, as accommodations and have constantly been told no, 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 no. And then this pandemic happens and all these accommodations that they had asked for, now everybody was asking for them. So yes, was the answer. Yes, you could work from home. Yes, you can do this. Yes, you can do that. Um, and I, I think that it's been a huge uh, 
source of empowerment to be able to know what it is that that you need and being able to feel confident in being able to ask for it and not taking no for an answer anymore mm. you know it's it's been uh more so in in working relationships or or school or whatnot of well yeah we can we can figure out ways to make this work and make it equitable for for everyone um you know i that's that's kind of the one thing that this this past year um, it's been a little bit harder. Um, VAs have been shut down, so I haven't had as many um, interactions with uh, with a lot of new new veteran members. Um, you know, those that have been trying to you know stay active and stay you know stay healthy um, during during this the this past year has been uh, been been pretty big. But um, being able to to you know 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 what know what your worth is and and know what your power is mm. um has been uh been something i think that has been a huge um aspect for for the the disability community to uh to be able to undertake during this time yeah i think both your stories kind of reflect on the self-advocacy there mm -hmm. um, being able to speak up and be proud uh, so uh, that's the type of, of success story we love to hear. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Sometimes we'll get like, ah, the, the bench went from, you know, 50 to a hundred, but mm -hmm. to, to hear those life, uh, changing <clears throat> kind of success, success stories. <clears throat> I'd like to ask a little bit about the types of adaptive equipment that are available here at Lakeshore. Okay. Um, I, I can start and I'll speak mostly to what we have within the rec and athletics department, um, simply because that's what I'm most familiar with. Um, but we, if you want to play a sport on a court that would involve lots of pushing, um, um, pushing a wheelchair, we have sport wheelchairs. And there are several different kinds of sport wheelchairs. So you, you have um, wheelchairs for basketball, there's wheelchairs for wheelchair rugby, um, and then, I was just saying murder ball is so cool. Hey, mm -hmm. yeah, that's the original name of it. And um, then we have, um, we got brand new chairs for the wheelchair football um, team that we have. Um, so the individual, <clears throat> if they want to participate in these programs and these sports, doesn't have to go out of pocket and purchase their own, um, but they can borrow or rent one from Lakeshore. Right. And we, chairs are expensive. Yeah. Um, there, there's no way around that. And the, I feel yeah, like that's a huge barrier it, that you guys are breaking down there. Yeah, absolutely. And there, so what we'll do is we'll, if you participate in our programs, we'll of course outfit individuals with a chair um, that we have. But as you can imagine, a there there is a difference between a recreation chair that is general purpose that you kind it kind of fits you and kind of doesn't. And then the performance you get out of a chair that is dialed in specifically to you. We also want to help our athletes um, work to be able to get their own chair. And they, we help them achieve that and get that through different grants that are available. Um, just because chairs are outrageously expensive and we want to work with individuals to help them be able to obtain the means to be able to get those. And even navigating what that looks like to try and get some grants can be overwhelming. I'll, I'll move back on it. Yeah, I mean, there's the the, the big ones, um, Challenged Athletes Foundation, they do a, a biannual um, cycle of, of grant funding um, that can help with getting equipment, whether it's coaching, um, they and on the, the military side, it's a, a year-round program because the the population for for the military is a little bit smaller. Um, but there there are several other things, you know, of of going out and if you, you know, look up grants for wheelchairs, um, it 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 does it is it is overwhelming. Um, and trying to figure out um, those that are are actually. Um, competitive and worthwhile, you know, the time or not you know, going to ask for, you know, a thousand dollars in return to be able to get a, a $10,000 chair. Um, you know, even, even those become, it, it's cost prohibitive. Yeah. Um, but the way I, I like to explain the, the adapted pieces of equipment is because we do, we are very fortunate here at Lakeshore to let people, um, try out and until they're able to, you know, either 
find or um, get equipment that works for, our, for their own purposes. Be like, so we're going to go play basketball. You're going to play basketball in my shoes. I never thought of it like that. I mean, you know, and, <clears throat> and, and people will say, well, what size shoe do you wear? doesn't matter. Yeah. You know, you're going to. That's a huge game changer. It's a, it's a huge game changer. And that's something that people can equate to of thinking of, okay, well, you know, I, I wear a size nine, by the way, in women's. Um, but, <laughs> you know, whether that matters or not, but, you know, having having to try to to, to operate and, and, and play and, and be successful in somebody else's shoes is the, the same equivalent to, you know, somebody else's sports chair or somebody else's hand cycle or somebody else's recumbent or, you know, any other adapted a piece of piece of equipment that, that we would have. Yeah. It would working, be like, working in somebody else's, it's it's hard to do. You want it dialed in for you. If I were to try and skate in somebody else's boots in hockey, I'd break an ankle. Mm -hmm. I, I'd miss a lip and I would snap a leg. Mm -hmm. Uh, so that, that really hits home for me. I could mm -hmm. never do that. Yeah. Um, or in, in the case for, for sled hockey and somebody else's sled, you know, <clears throat> I want, I heard that Lakeshore has some sleds. We do. And I've never seen anybody at Pelham and that's the only ice that we have here in mm -hmm. Birmingham. I would love to see that. And I don't know what that looks like, but that would be we really can, cool to can, see. I'm sure we can make that that happen because there are some open skates down there mm -hmm. there are just yeah and it doesn't They're have to be strictly at, hockey at one point in time they had talked about a pelham getting some sleds and having some there but um i don't know if that ever no. materialized I, I have, they don't have any yeah other they it never materialized like and there's been um there's a, a sled hockey team in nashville and there's a sled hockey team in Atlanta and they're like you know where's equidistance yeah. in between those two points is Birmingham and so they would like for us to be able to get a a, a sled hockey but you know there there are more opportunities for ice time and places to to have it like we've talked about even just having you know clinics and stuff and they're like well we could do it at 11 p.m on yeah. a Sunday <clears throat> night it's, and it's like Stuff. that's not that's not gonna work um and here i feel like a lot of it is like, i meet so many people in birmingham like, i'm like oh i skate in hockey they're like mm -hmm. birmingham is hockey mm -hmm. it's just a lot of college football around yes. here <laughs> it's kind of overwhelming there and i'd like to highlight my family member does utilize some of the equipment in the weight room and mm -hmm. is very adaptive there mm -hmm. uh, being able to get into like the squat racks or you know the push um barbells stuff like that so now if <clears throat> somebody may need help uh, with them on a one-on-one -on -one basis, could they bring their helper with them or their caregiver? Uh, short answer, yes. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. yeah, I mean, they're able to bring, um, you know, if, if, whether it's needing assistance in, in the, the locker rooms or changing um, or with any other ADLs, um, we do uh, have uh, people come in, they register as a, as a caregiver. Um, they're not supposed to be working out with them um but you know some of that does become uh an inherent piece of of working out or helping somebody work out there may be some you know having to walk next to somebody or or, or whatnot or be in the pool with them mm -hmm. um my family member we have uh one of her helpers her caregivers comes with her yeah in the pool. Um, but we also, um, we do offer both in aquatics and in the fitness center, um, personal training. Mm -hmm. Um, it's, I don't remember. It's what, well worth it's, it. Emily, I'm going to give it, Emily Mallard a shout out. She's helped us. <laughs> <laughs> Been tremendous. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's, you know, it, we've got some people that, you know, going back to that scheduling and accountability, it's like, okay, I have a weekly appointment with Joe and I, you know, that's going to help me keep and stay on schedule, um, whether I really need to, to have Joe's assistance or not. But sometimes it's just making those, you know, changes into somebody's workout plan or, okay, well, you, you've struggled with this. Let's, let's try, try that and being able to, to make those adjustments, um, on, on the fly. That's, uh, that's kind of where I got my, my start. I did a lot of training in the, in the pool. Well, it sounds like you both kind of started at the pool as a lifeguard and then as a I trainer. Was a, yeah. I was a, a aquatic specialist. Yeah. Yeah. And we, we worked down there at the same time. Mm -hmm. Oh really? Yep. yep. That's pretty yeah. cool. Made a couple of saves with the same. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, we have about 10 more minutes here. 
Um, and I'm going to kind of jump around. I want to ask about Lima Foxtrot. Okay. If you could give us the history behind that and what the program is about. Sure. So there's really two aspects to it. Um, it started in 2006 um, when, you know, that was kind of the, the surge in Iraq and Afghanistan. And there were so many men and women coming back with, um, you know, injuries and, you know, from... I liken the conflicts to Vietnam and um, Iraq and Afghanistan similar so that, you know, mo more and more people were, were coming home in, in body bags to where now it was the advances in, in military medicine and um, science, and, science and everything had, had, you know, helped keep people alive and being able to overcome some of their injuries. Um, yeah, so, because somebody might bleed out on the battlefield, whereas now we can stop that. Right, you know? right, yeah. And um, <clears throat> so people, you know, some of our, our partners and, and donors and stuff were like, how can, how can we help? Mm -hmm. Like, you know, stay not going outside of our wheelhouse, you know, we're, we're not looking in the employment front or the education front, you know, we're a sport and recreation facility. What can we do to help, um, you know, get These veterans, get, get, get veterans yeah. and, and their families because, uh, you know, let's be honest, you know, you, you've had, you know, uh, a loved one that had multiple deployments, you know, might be home for three months and then be gone for, you know, six, eight, 12, sometimes 18 months at a time. And then, okay, now we've had an injury. So there's all of that time that they have spent in the, the hospital, whether, you know, it's usually started over in Germany and then come over to, to Walter Reed or uh, BAMC, which is in, in Texas, or uh, Balboa, which is in um, San Diego, but having having the, that time away, and so now you've got all this rehab time, and it's more time away that you've had away from, you, you know, your loved ones and whatnot, and so um, we created a, a program. We thought that it was going to be just one-time deal, and, you like know, we'd pat, like, sure, we'd pat themselves on their back, and it was doing such a great job. And it just showed at that time what, uh, what wasn't out there and how much assistance people really were looking for. Um, so we started some weekend extension or week extended weekend opportunities um, to where uh, bringing in men and women from around the country and more importantly, bringing someone else with them. Mm. Like they got to bring, we would just call it a guest because we didn't want to say, oh, this is a couple's retreat or... This is, you know, you've got to have another family member. We just said it was a guest. Some people would bring like their kids or a kid um, or a battle buddy or somebody, just somebody to be able to A, have that common experience with. So it goes back to that community and then B, having somebody to hold them accountable when they get back home. It's like, okay. Oh, I know you, you can do this. I yes, saw what you, you can do. I've seen you do this. I've, I've helped, <clears throat> you know, learn how, you know, we can do this together. Mm -hmm. um, kind of one of my favorite stories is uh, one of our camps, we had uh, a gunnery sergeant, which is, you know, one of those old grizzled Marines. And we were, he was set up to do do tennis we, we would do cycling we would do scuba we would do our rock wall that's here we'd go to our indoor air rifle and archery range um we do some mindfulness we do just a bunch of different activities and one of them was tennis because you know tennis is something i like i said i grew up on a farm my home community is less than two thousand people we have tennis courts yeah you know tennis is something that it's fairly easy to be able to find and be able to do. An apartment complex is probably going to have a tennis and, court. And, you know, and two, it's one of those sports that, you know, the rules are just slightly different for a chair user versus somebody who is standing and you're able to play against one another or mm -hmm. play on the same side um, doing a, a, a run roll. Um, but he was just, he's like, I've played tennis. I don't like tennis. I don't want to do this. And so I tell him, I, I tell him, like, going into this, I was like, okay, and I know this is kind of aging me, but bear with me, you know, the, we're going to take the approach of Mikey with Life Cereal. Try it. You might like it. So, knowing that going in, and I said, okay, I said, I understand that you, you know, you, you've done this before, I said, but, you know, our staff is taking a lot of time out to be able to plan activities I said, it would be a sign of respect just by, by going. I said, try it. If you hate it, 
they'll send me a message. You can go back to, you know, where we have housing here on campus. You can go back to your cottage and we'll, we'll resume things later. He's like, okay. And I said, okay. So I took him and his wife to, to tennis and I, you know, kind of circle around, just kind of checking on everything and didn't see him, didn't see him. Well, did see him. He's finally, that night at dinner, he like pulls me aside. He's like, may I speak with you? I was like, God, <laughs> here uh -oh. we go. Here he comes. <laughs> and he goes, I need to apologize. And I said, for what? And he said, I had a horrible attitude about this. He said, you were right. He's like, I did need to try it. He's like, your instructor was awesome. And he goes, this, he's like, that's probably the most fun that I've had since I've, I've been here. Get a call from him like two weeks later. And he's like, hey, it's me again. Starting to apologize. My <laughs> wife and I have now played tennis three days a week. Really? At, at home. And it's just like, <clears throat> okay, just open yourself up to a possibility. Mm -hmm. um, so we, uh, so they're able to bring a guest. Um, we've also added a family style camp because again, um, you'd have a, a parent who has several children and only could only take one, mm -hmm. um, or a couple that would come and say, oh, this is great, but it was really a struggle trying to figure out what I was going to do with my kids. And so we're like, we'll solve this problem. We'll bring them all. Um, so our, our family camps, uh, you know, some of the best memories I've got are seeing a, a, a parent being able to ride next to their, their kid, um, on a bike, you know, their kids on training wheels, learning how to ride a bike and, and there they are, be able to, to ride next to them. Are there any upcoming events with, we have been doing a lot of stuff locally. So that's kind of the other aspect of it is, um, so anyone in the greater Birmingham area who has a service connected physical disability or chronic health condition, um, that's getting compensation from the VA. So if it's service connected, um, they're able to get a free membership for them and anyone else in their, in their household, um, to be able to, to use the, the facility here at, at Lakeshore. That's awesome. Um, so, well, it, it, again, it, it goes back to what we've been saying that it's important that everybody has an opportunity to be active. To, together. Um, so we're, we're doing more things, um, locally versus some of the weekend stuff, just because of where we are with, with COVID and yeah, travel and housing. And it's different it's, like every month to every it, week. It is, it is. It's right hard now. to, um, to try to plan in advance for plan in advance stuff. and, and making everybody feel comfortable because even, uh, you know, any, any mental health issues that a person may have, um, before COVID has certainly exacerbated post COVID, um, with, with any, you know, travel or anxiety or, or, or things like that. And, and just, you know, we want people to be able to come and, and feel safe, secure, safe, secure and, and get the most out of it that they're able to get. Now you mentioned that <clears throat> you're doing a lot of local work here mm -hmm. and Really, uh, if you're receiving services from the VA and have a physical disability, it's a free membership. Does Lima Foxtrot uh, include individuals that may not have a physical disability, but maybe like a PTSD? Or I don't know how I would so phrase it, that. It, it falls um, anything in the, the mental health spectrum because our mission is to serve those with physical disabilities and chronic health conditions. That falls outside of it. Gotcha. Um, but say if you've got degenerate disc disease in your back, and also have post-traumatic stress, the degenerative disc disease is going to get you into the membership with Lakeshore, not so much the, the, the post-traumatic stress. I got you. Um, we're going to ask you one other question, and then we're going to circle back and kind of close sure. uh, the broadcast here. Um, something that I learned today is that uh, wheelchair football exists. It does. This is the inaugural year. Um, there's a, a new league. It's the USA Wheelchair Football League. Um, it is, uh, provided by move United, which is a, a national multi-sport disabled, uh, organization. What's it called again? Move United. Move United. Yeah. Um, they, uh, there are nine cities that have been selected for, well, there were four cities that were selected for the first year, then COVID happened. And then they expanded, of course, because that's like, I, you know, we need to trademark that and have shirts made because COVID happened. Um, but and then there were uh, Birmingham was one of the five uh, expansion cities, so um, we're the only city of of the nine that doesn't have an NFL team mm -hmm. associated with it. So like 
Cleveland, they look like the Browns. Kansas City has got the Chiefs. And uh, L.A. picked the Rams instead of the Chargers. Whatever. And what's Birmingham? Uh, we are the Hammers. The Hammers. The so Birmingham our mascot Hammers. is a ha- like a Thor hammer? Like a thing? Thor-type hammer that it's it's designed to where it also, like, it's got motion to it. So where it looks kind of like it's a wheel. Yeah. So it's kind of like the oh, okay. got that wheelchair look to it. Yeah, I got gotcha. um, you. That's pretty cool. Now, I've seen, I've never seen wheelchair football. Mm-hmm. Um, and I, I have seen wheelchair rugby. Mm-hmm. I've watched some YouTube videos and I actually was watching, I tuned in for, um, the, uh, uh um, Olympics in Paralympics. Japan, Paralympics mm-hmm. in Japan. And I'd like to give a shout out to, uh, the wheelchair rugby team for mm-hmm. taking silver there. Mm-hmm. Um, and another shout out, I believe to Japan's head coach, uh, who has, is in the Birmingham area. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Kevin. Uh, so, so very, very intense competition. There is a blast to watch. Um, I want to give a shout out to Mr. Lujano for letting me know that that was happening at that time. Now, would you say, how would you compare wheelchair football and wheelchair rugby as, as like, ferociousness and banging on each other there. so both of them are full contact um we are our, our athletes do wear football helmets um it's it's seven on seven um the the field it, there's a few differences um the field is shorter it's a 60 yard field um instead of like first and tens we have um kind of four four downs to get 15 yards there's like a line of gain between um, the 15, the 30, the opposite 15, and, and the goal line. Would you say the contact is just uh, as much as wheelchair rugby? Oh, yeah. yeah. I mean, we've got um, one of the guys on on our team um, plays. He, he was an alternate for Tokyo um, and, and actually plays in his rugby chair, which is legal. <laughs> and, um, you know, he made the comment of, you know, we don't wear helmets in rugby. And I was like, we're going to wear helmets in football yeah. because... Uh, well, I imagine on a bigger field because wheelchair rugby, I think, is played on a little bit smaller field than wheelchair football. It, it, it is, and the athletes will have um, have more function um, so that they're able to generate a little bit more power on, on their... Yeah, um, and you hit. have greater distance to get that speed up, so mm-hmm. the collisions may be a little bit... We've we've had some collisions oh, and scoop, scooping people up off the off the floor and, and whatnot. Um are we this year they're only having two tournaments we had a tournament in phoenix two weeks ago um where we notched our first victory against cleveland well you won the first victory they so you play one game there is we, we played four games or five games and we were one out one of four but finally but you know you gotta take we got off the schneid exactly so, you gotta get that first um, one under the belt and then uh halloween weekend there's a, a tournament in in kansas city um, that I'm pretty sure I think all the teams are going to be be attending. See, this is stuff we need and to be broadcasting. Like, it would be awesome to broadcast that out, tournament stuff well, like so that. Well, we're, so we're looking um, maybe to, to try to host something in, in 2022. Yeah. Um, there, I think, well, I'm not going to say... Um, cause there's some, uh, there's some stuff yeah, yeah. In, the, in the works that I'm just like, Ugh. I need to speak um, with Mr. VZ and just be like, Hey, would you send me a list of all the sporting events we want to broadcast? Yeah, out? yeah, absolutely. Yeah, that'd be cool. Um, but there's, uh, there's, um, you know, it's, it's hard hitting. It's, um, it's got the backing of, uh, of the NFL. Um, so it's, uh, Hopefully, we'll be in uh, in in more cities, and uh, I, you know they've there's this. I've watched a little bit of football over the weekend, and there's this uh, NFL commercial of uh, who's got my back, and uh, you know it's got flag football, it's got um, women's flag football, which is also starting to be a thing, and and hopefully uh, sooner than later they'll also have. Uh, you know, a component of wheelchair football in that that league sponsored. Uh, yeah, and even promo. In, in the twenty in the World Games, mm-hmm. uh, stuff like that. Because I know mm-hmm. the World Games being here in Birmingham it will be the first time I think that there is an adaptive sport mm-hmm. in the World Games. You might be onto something with the whole World Games thing. Yeah, yeah. Then, I'm not going to say, but you might be onto something. It's, it's gonna be, ah, I'm not going to spoil it. <laughs> this is for after the cameras stop. This will this will be a spoiler for <laughs> for for future. <laughs> um. One thing I can add on that, yes, sir. We in, in November we're looking to have wheelchair football at Lakeshore. Okay. So if someone wants to participate, they can come to an in-house league. We won't be traveling around the country playing, but we'll be playing here in-house, and so um, would welcome people to come and participate in that league. 
we, we do want to keep it adults only. <laughs> yeah, just for secure. I mean, and, yeah. and it, it would, it's it's an adult. If you have a full anyway. grown person ramming into like a student, it's yeah. not going to yeah. work out too well there. Right. Um, I like the in house a lot because traveling like that to Phoenix is quite a bit, you know, and it takes time. It's a long weekend mm -hmm. or a week there. Um, as we wrap up in a close here, what would you say to somebody that is thinking about starting to get active? Um, and in general, anything that you think could benefit the community? I think the hardest part is starting. And it, the, the thing is, is today, especially, you can find all the excuses um, to not start, um, especially given we're in a pandemic. And so is it is it hard to get started? Absolutely. It is very difficult to get going. Um, but what you can do is push through that. And if you can do just a little bit at a time, um, I'm myself in, in that same place and to become more active. And I'm going to start out on saying, OK, on the weekends, I'm going to get in 30 minutes of activity in on the, um, per day. And so just starting out in the weekends and then maybe that will grow into something more routine. I agree. I, I need to get back on a little bit of a schedule myself. But I think that's with anyone and everyone just kind of right now is that everything it's kind of like, you know, it's we've been playing 52 card pickup for the last 18, 18 months. 19 months yeah. that it's just like ugh, everything is in, in trying to put something together and then things get, you know, thrown up all, all, all over again. Um, I would say, you know, don't compare yourself, you know, people. Um, people will, will say, oh, well, so-and-so is doing this or so-and-so is doing that. You know, people by nature were competitive, but there, there's no competition in the, in, in being healthy. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, it, it's, it's doing what is, is right for you at that moment and, and seeing what you can do and build upon to, uh, to improve yourself. You're against yourself day in and day out is what they mm -hmm. always say. You're competing against yourself. Mm -hmm. Got to do better tomorrow than you did today. Yep. Well, I want to thank you both for being here with us <clears throat> and um, just kind of going through the, re the um, emphasis on being active in general, how Lakeshore can help you be more active, the programs available. And what we'll do is we'll put each of your uh, office numbers in the chat. So if anybody has questions about RNA in general or Lima Foxtrot, sure. um, they'll, they'll have quick access to that. So at this point, we're going to go ahead and end the broadcast. And if you will each give your respective cameras a wave. So I'm going to wave at this one. Yeah, you'll wave at that one, that one. And we'll say, we'll see you guys on Thursday.